as our world races at an ever faster pace. We'll land an airplane every 70 seconds for more than two hours. And delivery deadlines shrink. Being an island, there's a lot of medicine coming in. It's always urgent. The skies aren't necessarily the limit for the mega movers. Almost everything in this world you can put in this aircraft. In this series, we go deep inside the $6 trillion air freight industry. Every day, we move the equivalent of 3% of the world's GDP. You name it, we can move it. Showing the people. You have a lot of high anxiety, you don't want to do this. They're just sitting on the runway laughing at me. And incredible operations. It's a little yeah. bit sticky. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have an aircraft on stand 666, which has got an engine for it. You get two minutes to get there. To keep this complex, high-pressure trade airborne. There's 30 tonne of weight on that aircraft. It could tip the aircraft up at worst, or it could damage the fuselage. And travel with an extraordinary array of goods. Now we just need the spacecraft so we can load and then get out of Dodge. From out of this world giants, life-saving medical supplies. It's a very good feeling knowing that every day we are shipping medication that could improve someone's life. Perishables. Nobody is, is in such a hurry as a dead salmon. And components for some of the greatest spectacles on Earth. 21 races, if it took three weeks to get it there by sea, we need a 63-week year. Uh, we have to use that. Put your seats in the upright position, buckle in, and prepare to go max speed with Mega Air. In this episode... Whoa, whoa, stop, 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 stop. The world's biggest military transporter turned mega freighter thunders in. Almost everything in this world you can put in this aircraft. To whisk heavy machinery to an African mine. They sometimes like trying to do a jigsaw puzzle with a leaf blower. A covert $55 million shipment of cancer drugs. You, you, you can't film this bit here, I'm sorry faces a race to stay on time and unspoiled. It's a very good feeling knowing that we're shipping medication across the world that could save someone's life. An airport wildlife officer gets into a flap. Sure, sure. Over a flock invading his runway. Permission to release the birds going cartridge. And we meet the man who constantly pushes back. 9-1. Clear to push. To keep a global package delivery service on track. You got a big one this time, fellas. It's a big bird. It's 5.30 a.m. Somewhere in Middle England, two trucks slowly rumbled their way towards East Midlands Airport. On board are two massive 30-ton rock crushers destined for a mine in Africa. These machines here would be used for sorting out different types of rock. We specialize in different size loads, abnormal loads, wide loads, and long loads. I haven't actually been over to the airport before with any of this. Hopefully somebody has pre-warned them of what we're actually coming with. Worry not, William, all is in hand. Working on the principle, it takes a monster to move a monster. In the skies overhead, the only aircraft that can handle such an abnormal cargo touches down. All 24 wheels. This is the Antonov 124-100. Once a military transporter, today its claim to fame is being one of the world's largest freighter planes. Its extraordinary bulk dominating the airport. The Antonov 124 originally was built specifically to accept tanks, missiles, but since the collapse of the Soviet Union, the aircraft's been used in the commercial uh, business. It carries all kinds of things, helicopters, aircraft engines, sea containers, trucks. But today we're carrying these rock crushers. Yes, the sheer size and weight of these two rock crushers could literally crush smaller planes. 
Uh, these weigh 30 tonnes each and they're three and a half metres tall and 18 metres long. No other aircraft can carry that kind of height and that kind of length. All being well, the rock crushers will fly from East Midlands to a Gabon mine in the middle of the African bush. And it's proved a bit of a nightmare to organise. We've had a few problems along the way. One problem was they've never seen an Antonov 124 before. This aircraft's got a very wide wingspan, so there is a chance it will overhang the taxiways when it arrives in Gabon. So it's been an interesting process. It's sometimes like trying to do a jigsaw puzzle with a leaf blower. Well, Paul, your leaf blowing jigsaw troubles may not be over yet. The Antonov crew still need to get these heavyweight hulks on board without destroying the place. The floor of cargo cabin, it's 36 meters long and it's six and four meters width and almost five meters high. So basically almost everything in this world you can put in this aircraft. Now the nose ramp is opening. Each cargo in piece is 30 tonnes. So we have to build a special ramp equipment to load this cargo into a plane. And it's hard to do that and uh, we need to prepare. The main goal is to construct the special uh, ramp system that would be in one level with the floor of aircraft so you can put the cargo into airplane. Making this challenging task even more impressive is the fact that the Antonov crew must double up on duties. Effectively, this aircraft could fly for 500 flying hours, so that could even be up to six months before it has to return to base. But all the while the aircraft's flying, it needs to be maintained. And these guys, not only are they the loading crew, they're technicians as well. So they have to be able to replace engines, replace undercarriages. And they live on board the aircraft, as I say, for up to 500 flying hours. While the crew toil on their heavy duty load ramp, flight manager Anton takes us behind the scenes of his flying home. This is a place where technical crew stays during flight. Here is wardrobe when we can keep our clothes. Here is our kitchen. We have oven, we have fridge, so you can have a tea, coffee, whatever you want, and whenever you want. Not when the stewardess comes to you with a cup of tea. This is a place where we can spend the time during flight. This is my office, <laughs> seriously. Uh, this is working place of our flight crew, captain, second pilot, flight engineer, second flight engineer, navigator and radio operator. You can see how many systems you have to control during flight. Uh, it's not new, but it works really well. Outside in the freezing cold, the Ukrainian crew have almost finished their ramp that'll hopefully bear the considerable weight of the rock crushers. But just as they're about to rumble forth, Tom Blakeman, who chartered the plane, Lordy. spots a potential crushing issue. This track vehicle comes off the low loader. The impact will be quite heavy, so the tracks could bring some serious gouging onto the concrete. So the stakes have suddenly ramped up. Will the stone crushers wreak catastrophic concrete crushing? <laughs> Louisville, Kentucky, in the USA, home to Worldport, the planet's largest automated package handling facility and heartbeat of UPS's global delivery service. It's just the definition of a mega air operation. While the state-of-the-art aircraft, control center, and 155 miles of package sorting conveyor belts grab the headlines. It's huge, pretty incredible place. There are less heralded roles that keep this behemoth ticking over. One of these unsung heroes is pushback driver Greg McNatt. His motor is a Challenger 550 tractor, and his job to start the journeys of UPS's 248-strong aircraft fleet. Come on, Greg. 
What's up, Kerry? How you everything, doing? Everything going good today? Yep. Doing right. good, man. Everything pre-tripped and ready to go? We're ready. All right, well, let's get, uh, get to work. Sounds good. Right now, we're waiting on the mechanics and the pilot to do their walkthroughs and their pre-checks. They're just going to walk along the wings, make sure that uh, both sides of the aircraft are good, clear of uh, all other aircraft, all other employees on the ramp, any type of vehicles that we got going on, make sure they're out of the way and clear to go so we have a clean push. This is a mechanic. He just took the power out, so they're ready to go. Uh, we need, I need to help these guys with the stairs and we'll be done. We have the, the tow bar which hooks up onto the gear here. The pin goes in place, it's set, hooks on the pushback tractor, tow bar in the front here. And that flight crew is trusting them that when they're pushing this aircraft back, they're pushing in the right spot and as safely as possible. The pressure is now on Greg to get the aircraft out on time. We're ready to go. UPS's global operation is so vast and complex, any little holdups can set off a chain reaction, delaying or even canceling future flights. 9-1, clear to push. 9-1, push and drop. Copy. So with over 50 tons of cargo to shunt, it's not the time to turn boy racer. Right now I'm just scanning the area, <clears throat> making sure we got everybody out of the way. We're good, we're on our way. Greg's first big push is a fully loaded 200 plus ton Boeing 767, stretching to 180 feet long. Or if you like surreal comparisons, the equivalent of 40 Danny DeVitos lying head to toe. We push quite a few out every day. Busy, busy. Always gotta make sure everybody's in the right position. You know, this job is exciting at times. You know, you, you get to push these aircraft. You just gotta make sure you're doing everything right. Make sure you follow procedures. The co-pilot side is they're starting this engine to get ready. Once I get this pushed out, which I didn't do a very good job of, take the bar off of the aircraft. The mechanic will take the pin out. The pilot has control. So, one down, many more planes to go. But ever the perfectionist, Greg ain't feeling total pushback satisfaction. I wish I would have done a little bit better job. I was a little crooked, but he got out there safely and uh, we didn't have any issues in a long time, and that's all we did. After that minor wobble, Greg's afternoon of hitching and pushing passes without another hitch. And as his shift winds down, he gets a shot at the world's biggest production freighter, the Mega Proportion 747-8, weighing in at over 400 tons. I mean, it's a heavy aircraft, so you gotta, I mean, you just really have to be careful. You don't want to over-exceed the, the landing gear too much as you're pushing it and turning it. So it, it, it just has to be precise in what you do. If you stress out, if you, you know, if you have a lot of high anxiety, you don't want to do this because a lot of bad things can happen in such a small period of time. Are you the right man for the job? Today I am. Fighting words indeed. So, the stage is set. 11.36, ready to go. I have clearance, I'm just making sure my wing walkers are ready. We're good, we're ready to go. This classic David and Goliath jewel pits a 50-ton Challenger 550 tractor against a 450-ton 747 freighter. All right, we got a big one this time, fellas. It's a big bird, it's a big bird. Oh, going in reverse. Because the aircraft is actually pushing me down the ramp. You have to know what you're doing, where you're gonna end up. He may be in retreat, but Greg's not panicking. This can be fully loaded and with all the engines going, and we can still push it. This plane is in my care and my care only. Where I put it is where it's going to go. With that never say die attitude, it's a textbook pushback. Another one down. The gigantic 747 8, packed with packages, is sent packing thanks to a giant push from drivers like Greg. We have so many destinations around the world, around this country. We just 
Push him out and go to the next one. East Midlands Airport packs a major punch in the global air cargo world. Surprisingly, this relatively unheralded airfield, bang in the middle of England, is Britain's busiest for pure cargo, including a whopping £10 billion worth of goods to non-EU destinations. We are a strategic national asset. We're one of the very few airports that is um, licensed for 24-7 operations. We ship around uh, just over 1,000 tonnes of cargo every day through the airport, 365,000 tonnes a year. We're ideally placed right in the centre of the country, so actually we can reach 90% of the population within four hours. We're able to facilitate the movement of the high value goods, such as engines, aircraft, we're moving Formula One cars, animals, you name it, we can move it. It's vital nothing hinders the frantic shuttle of freight flying in and out. And sadly for ground ops crew Keith, the wings here are not all made of metal. The feathered variety can send him into a bit of a flap. My job as wildlife control officer is to ensure that we minimise the bird activity on the airfield. We're trying to protect the aircraft because aircraft and birds do not mix. The biggest danger that they pose, they have the potential for birds to be ingested into the aircraft engine. And depending on the size uh, of the bird, if it's up to a pound or more in weight, it can destroy certain parts of the engine. Well, it's clear our feathered friends are not so friendly and welcome to Keith. Keeping them out of harm's way is top of his pecking order. Quite often, the best dispersal method is just the fact that we're always out here. So the birds get to know this vehicle, the sea, is going to scare them away and move them away. And if the garish airport SUV doesn't work, it's plan B. We've got old school, tried and trusted methods of getting out the vehicle and flapping like a big bird. On this occasion, giving the birds the bird. Flap does the trick. But a short while later, touring the intercontinental nine and a half thousand foot runway, he spies a bigger prey. This one's a nice one, it's a buzzard, sitting on the Mark II side. Absolutely nothing. There we go. So we'll move down to a different perch now. A version of Leapfrog. So I'm trying to move him along, and he's just going to hop and hop and hop. So all I'm doing is using my presence to try and move him further and further away. Now we're going to go a bit further down. It's all fun and games. Ah, I've got you now because I can get to you. Oh dear, back to square one. And to add to his woes, rather than scaring them off, Keith seems to be an unlikely bird magnet. I'm just noticing this some crow activity. But he's not panicking as he has some special scarecrow weapons in his armory. If I put the crow on him. We've got some recordings made in the 60s. We're able to, to mimic a birds in distress. They believe that one of their comrades is in distress and birds will naturally just fly away from danger. It's quite effective. As I say, it's another element that we can use the deciding to move on. At last, after failing to get the buzzard to buzz off, Keith has something to crow about. But later, Keith meets a more formidable foe, the Larus Canis. I've got gulls standing on the runway. Otherwise known as the common seagull, and they require Keith to pull out the big guns. Permission to release the bird scaring cartridge. Up too far at will. None of you's called Will, is there? Heathrow, UK, Europe's busiest passenger airport. And proof Blighty still rules the skies. 
Less publicized but equally impressive is IAG's cargo operation that shifts 40,000 temperature-sensitive medical shipments each year, something Emily Burton is rather proud of. IAG Cargo transported £30 billion pounds worth of goods last year. We have over 500 aircraft in our fleet, carry all different kinds of freights, everything from drugs to live animals such as tigers to tropical fish to perishables, so vegetables you might find in the supermarket. Everything that you can think of, IAG Cargo will move. Not to be sneezed at is the biggie. Millions of dollars worth of pharmaceuticals that includes two billion vaccine doses and a raft of other vital life-saving drugs. Today we're expecting three Envirotonas, so three of our flying fridges, and they're coming all the way from Northern Ireland, so they're being trucked from Northern Ireland into Heathrow, and then they're flying out to the US. And these are cancer drugs in glass vials, so not only are they very expensive, they have to be handled with care. Tasked with transporting this $55 million shipment over 300 miles to catch the Heathrow flight is freight forwarders Farmer Freight. The crushing responsibility is enough to make boss Andy reach for the Valium. We've just sent a double manned vehicle uh, to pick up product in mechanical units, effectively a portable fridge, which by their very nature can break down. We have the weather, we have the transport network itself. All of these things can work against us. My ultimate nightmare on a shipment like this, if we think about it, this is a very valuable, life-saving medicine. If the patient doesn't ultimately get their drug in the correct conditions, that could have a huge knock-on effect for the treatment of their illness. They're the things which tend to keep people awake at night. The nerve-shredding shipment is from drug manufacturer Almac in Northern Ireland. 17,000 glass vials of a breakthrough cancer treatment needs to be carefully freighted between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius all the way to Philadelphia in the USA. Gary, you open up the box. So I'm now going to come here and do a manual check. Make sure that the, the valves are the crack quantities. These products are all worth quite a lot of money, um, so there has to be extreme care taken. Once we put these valves back into the box and secure the box, we will be taking the valves into the lobby area where we will load them onto envirotainers. Straighten up now. And that's where Farmer Freight come into play. Yeah, you are. These are all coming off. We're going to open them up then, one by one, put the pallet in, strap it in, close it up. It'll be sealed and then meant the temperature will be monitored again then. To keep the fragile cancer vials in optimum condition, they'll be transported in special temperature controlled envirotainers. The only snag, they're battery powered, meaning any big shipment delays can result in drugs worth millions going down the pan. That's got to be number one. Yeah. Two. Three. So our truck drivers will need to keep a close eye on their battery life. We're going to check them as we load. We check the temperature and the battery as we do one at a time. They've used 10%. They're at 90% at the minute, which is fine, because it sounds like they've used a lot 10%, but that's just to get them to the temperature. Once they get to the temperature, they start to slow down the loss. Just before we load this pallet here, you'll see that there's temperature loggers on top of the pallet, so they're placed at either corner. This will guarantee that the product has been kept with, in the right storage conditions from the start of the journey through to the end of the journey. And you are, Mike. And you are. Yeah, OK, top and bottom, yep. Uh, no, I think it's all right, though. Is that yeah. Yeah. So that's the first one loaded. They're securing the envirotainer with a security seal. So that security seal will remain on the pallet throughout the journey. With all three envirotainers given the seal of approval, 
they must be loaded without any major bumps. I see you all right now, Gary. Yeah. Get a wee bit right hand down. Whoa, whoa, stop, just stop, 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 stop. Have you got sides? Okay, your side tonight. Yeah, That's the shipment now fully loaded, uh, so there's been no problems, no issue. It was done within good times. I'm um, confident that uh, all the product was in and will reach its destination now all in one piece. Hi, thank you. This is, um, stops anybody being able to open these doors. There we are. We're getting a bit of time, sitting slightly short now, we need to get down to the docks. Next port of call is the port of Belfast, but already the clock's ticking and batteries protecting their precious cargo draining. I hope we don't get any hold-ups on the way in. We shouldn't do it this time of day. No. no well, I don't, you never know, do you? No. Well, it looks a bit windy out there. So uh, if it gets too strong the wind, let's hope they don't cancel the boat. Adverse weather is not the only threat to safe delivery. Mega valuable drug shipments are also in the crosshairs of modern pirates. Criminal gangs counterfeit medicines for their illicit gains. The vehicle which we sent to Ireland had a covert tracking device in it. The drivers have defensive training. Oh, well. <laughs> you got that? Yeah. They're trained to understand when people are following the vehicle and be aware. We vary the routes, we take different ferries. So security is at the forefront of our mind. Let's be honest, you know, there's a lot of it going about and they're, they're, whatever you're carrying, if, if, if it's valuable, they'll take it. Uh, get into the port and... Uh, oh, by the way, you, you can't film this bit here. I'm sorry. After covertly entering Belfast port, stage one of the air freight consignment passes without a hitch. OK, that'll do, Tom. But later, the weather gods turn nasty as they unleash their fury that threatens to torpedo the shipment. Proper rain now, isn't it? Yeah, it's real rain. Come on. At East Midlands Airport, two gigantic rock crushers are about to embark on a perilous journey into the cavernous belly of the beast, otherwise known as the Antonov 124, a feat that promises even to test the mettle of its vastly experienced crew. The flight manager and the loadmaster are now with the cargo, sizing it up, measuring it, figuring out how they're going to do it, because these things are 30 tonnes each. So it's going to be quite a, an intricate operation to get this done. But before these caterpillar track monsters are unleashed, yeah, we need that, that one, Tom, who arranged the plane's charter, desperately wants to avoid being clobbered by a rather nasty bill. One of the things that we'll attempt to do as we do this transfer is to minimise the exposure of the airport concrete to the tracks to the stone crushers. You could actually bring some serious gouging onto the concrete itself, which not only puts the aircraft parking area out of use, but it's a costly repair. So that's to be avoided at all costs. Any concrete that we, we have to cross, we will have it protected by some rubber load spreaders. But we think we can do this without actually touching the concrete at all. Can you get as close to those aircraft ramps as possible so that we've got the least amount of concrete exposed? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Our crew is going to offload this mining equipment from the truck and they will be going one by one in one line. They're lifting the front of the crusher so that when it comes down the ramp, it's not going to ground. It will come down the ramp and then it will roll across the tyres and then up onto the extension ramp here. Finally, it's crunch time. All spectator Tom can do now... It's quite a decent run, isn't it? ..is pray no actual crunching takes place. Whoa. Oh, yo, 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 yo. 
The guy who's operating the controls, he's doing it remotely, so it's quite difficult for him. Effectively, he's driving it while walking, which is, uh, which is quite impressive. It's quite a delicate operation. Yeah, quite impressive. We rely on this man to do his job. Despite the absurdity of driving a 30-ton monster machine with what looks like a toy car remote control, the crusher reaches the aircraft ramp without causing major damage. Tom can almost breathe a sigh of relief. Lordy! You're happy for him to take it straight into the aircraft? OK. Yeah? Yeah. We'll just adjust these arms, lower the arms, before we transit up into the aircraft. That's probably a good idea, as airplanes, even hardcore transporters like the Antonov, don't fly so well with a broken nose. But thankfully, our joystick joyrider keeps everything under control and guides the crusher safely into the cargo hold. There's 30 tonne of weight on that aircraft now. If we took it right to the back of the aircraft, it could do some damage. It could tip the aircraft up at worst, or it could damage the fuselage. So it's been restrained in the middle of the aircraft until this one's in the nose. And then what they'll do is they'll take the first one a bit further in and then position this one right up next to it. A solid hour of careful manoeuvring both the industrial rock crushers are home and hosed. Thank God they're in. And crucially, in the correct loading position. Stability is key. It's quite difficult to, to centre the load. It's going to require something like at least 14 chains uh, to restrain it forward and aft and sideways, so uh, that's what the guys are doing at the moment. Hopefully the captain's going to have a nice time flying to Gabon. Technical crew is in a good mood. A little bit tired, but it's enough for us. It's OK for us, so go. Just a few operations to finish our job and we're ready to go. By that, Anton means the vital operation of keeping stomachs fed for the 3,860 mile journey. So this is the most important delivery of it all, food. There might be more catering than cargo. Is that it? Have you got more in there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. The food's on board, the technicians are on board, so we're almost good to go. So we're all happy, crew are happy. They got their food, the cargo's on, it's all in one piece, job done. Late into the night, a thunderous roar reverberates around East Midlands as the enormous Antonov 124, now 60 tons heavier, heads to an African mine in need of a pair of stone crushers. On the outskirts of Heathrow, Europe's busiest airport and mega cargo hub, an air freight forwarder is anxiously tracking a white truck running behind schedule. How are things looking? Yeah, there's a, bit of, there's a massive delay on the ferry. Just past burning. As it attempts to deliver a vital supply of cancer drugs bound for the US, before battery-powered temperature-controlled containers run out. We've had units come back here at less than 20%. The longer it's left, more chance that battery life can fail. Just like the contents of your fridge at home, these medicines are going to spoil. So, no pressure then, lads. To add stress, they're battling heavy traffic and a biblical downpour. Proper rain now, isn't it? The real rain. We had our, um, our quota of hold up. Yeah. Come on. Having earlier endured a delayed ferry amid storms, all the more important to stop and check the battery life on their envirotainers. Ugh. I'm gonna have to get a younger cold driver. Yeah, you have to get yeah, someone younger, yeah. Right, first unit. And the battery's 65. I expected a little bit more than that. 
Uh, 63, that one at the back there. We're going to have to go on charge when we get back now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, with the batteries running in the low 60s percent, the boys must dash to Farmer Freight HQ for a quick charge before checking into Heathrow. Come on. We're going to have a look. No red lights. No red no, lights. No. Will you check them? Yeah. And the last time we had a look at them was at Warwick. Okay, okay so now we're going to check the battery levels just to make sure it's still in spec. And the key thing is here is sort of green light um, rather than red, so green means good. Once the batteries are back to full charge, it's a short sprint over to Heathrow to get the Envirotainers logged into the airport's swanky constant climate centre. That's the one I want back signed, the rest of the yours, yeah? Gotcha. Thank you. As they come off, they'll check against the numbers, make sure they are charged, make sure they're the right temperature, there's no damage to the container. And that will be that, they'll sign our paperwork off, and that should be the end of it for us here this evening. It's really important that drugs and pharmaceuticals are kept at the specific temperatures that they're meant to in order to ensure their stability and their potency. So they will come into our Constant Climate Centre where they'll be prepped ready to fly. So we'll do the checks on the unit that they will be put on their aircraft and be on their way to, the, to America. Nothing we can't handle. Well, I beg to differ. The vital cancer drugs have travelled 756.9 miles without major mishap. See it flashing there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gone out of alignment. But just yards from the climate control centre, the conveyor system malfunctions. Right, sorry, the lane's actually gone red, so we just call the engineers. Has the ball been dropped in the dying seconds? At East Midlands Airport, UK. Ops 2 is holding golf while requesting runway surface and wildlife inspection. Ground Ops Supervisor Keith is battling valiantly to prevent air cargo disruption from birds engaging in dangerous foul play. We've now got clearance to go onto the runway. Once we cross over the greenlit line and the piano keys were actually on the runway surface itself. As you can see straight away, I've got ghouls standing on the runway. So this one we've got here is a juvenile, tell by the, the feather colours. It's a case sometimes of chasing them around. I just want them away from the runway. Ghouls, being a big bird, can make a, quite a lot of damage. And we had two aircraft taking off with multiple gull strike. Both of them ended up with engine failure in one engine and had to do an emergency landing back at the airfield. Unfortunately for Keith, these seagulls are a flying misnomer. They're permanent residents, despite the airport being over 60 miles from the sea. Most of the ghouls that we have around here, probably 30 or 40 generations since they saw the sea. So their main diet is what they can scavenge, wouldn't know what a fish looks like, but could tell you what times McDonald's opens. In Keith's bird-scaring locker is a device that blares out blood-curdling squawks. Normally, it's a fail-safe winner. They're just sitting on the runway laughing at me. We find that gulls have a tendency to come towards the sound rather than flying away from it. The potential is if they think one of their comrades is in some distress of some kind, he may have food on him that he may drop and they get a free meal. Oh look, we've got gulls this side as well. There's now an aircraft on the other end of the runway holding, waiting for me to complete. I want to make sure that the, I've dispersed the birds safely out of harm's way uh, so that this aircraft can uh, take off and depart successfully without any incident. We have uh, something called a bird scaring cartridge that we do use occasionally and will assist in moving the birds along. Time is big money in the air cargo world, so Keith's surefire gull dispersal tactic is to unholster the big guns. Ground Ops 2. Ops 2, tap. 
Uh, can I have permission to release the burst going cartridge? Up to, fire at will. Fire at will, up to. None of you's called Will, is there? A large uh, flashback going off tends to have the desired effect. A very, very strong set of rules as to how we can use it, where we can use it, and when we can use it. Can we stand clear? So that's moved the birds away completely. It's nice to, to set up a big bang and see all the birds disappearing. So that aircraft's departed, he's climbing away. The ghouls have moved away. Job well done. Yes, Keith can give himself a well-deserved pat on the back. And back at base, naturally the only way to broadcast his ornithological victory is via a tweet. The bird threat at East Midlands has been eliminated for the day. And we're all ready to have another go tomorrow. Nice. At Heathrow, on the outskirts of London, it's a hive of activity, with millions of passengers and cargo items in transit. One multi-million dollar batch of life-saving cancer drugs have just received final call for the 4 p.m. flight to Philadelphia in the United States. Which one are we going for first, Phil? And Simon Crute must ensure it boards in timely fashion. So we're just going to do a, a visual check on the unit, obviously, to make sure it's still fit to fly. This is our computer unit on the system. If anybody can get into here, they can change the settings on it. So they could change it to a higher temperature, a lower temperature, which would affect the temperature on the shipment, obviously. So we have to seal that up. We all good on that one as well, Phil? Yeah. With the three refrigerated Envirotainers, designed for aircraft cargo holds signed and sealed, it's time to deliver. With normal freight, we can get them out nice and early. It doesn't really matter if it's sitting outside in our, in our storage system outside. But with this freight, keeping it at correct temperatures, we've got to get the right time to obviously get it out of there, have enough time to get it to the aircraft but also not have it exposed to the weather. You could have temperature excursions because of it being outside for too long. One, two, three. Well, while we're dealing with the units, we've obviously got to be very careful with obviously not trying to smash them into things. Very, very high value, that's the thing. To prevent the Envirotainers getting lost in the Warren that is Britain's biggest airport, they first pass through the high-tech Puma Centre. When it gets inside this in our system here, it turns completely computerised. It will work out the quickest route through the building to make sure, obviously, that they go to an exit on the right door so the driver's there waiting for it, so we don't lose any time on that either. Fingers crossed, it all goes perfectly like that. <laughs> Having been hopefully sent to the correct exit, the rush is on to get our Envirotainers into the cool sanctuary of the temperature-controlled aircraft cargo hold. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to load it onto what we call a dolly. Make sure it's ready for travel out to the aircraft. The aircraft in question is a passenger 747-400. What the paying customers don't realise is what may also be going along for the ride. 99% of the freight that we uh, fly is going on the bottom of our, our passenger aircraft. Passengers will probably haven't got a clue what is underneath them, but yeah, we carry a lot of animals, dogs and cats, carry lions and tigers and stuff like that. Formula One cars, I have foot snakes on there, but <laughs> they, hopefully they're in the right box. <laughs> Today, the Philadelphia passengers will have to settle for $55 million worth of potent cancer drugs, now ready for embarkation. If you look at the unit, they have a slanted bit on them. That slanted bit will go into the curve at the bottom of the aircraft, so it can slide down the aircraft and be nice and snug in that aircraft and make sure it doesn't move. So that's the last one in. They're going to push it down the aircraft, they'll shut the doors and that'll be ready off to Philadelphia. Superb, ready to go. 
It's a very good feeling knowing that every day we are shipping medication across the world that could improve someone's life and maybe even save someone's life. It's a good feeling knowing when you've got that on the aircraft and it's on its way to the patient. Next time, there's more crazy cargo, more fabulous freighters, and more demanding deadlines to hit. As Mega Air cranks it up to the max. Yeah.